Dealing with negative employees quickly, it is important to stop negativity spreading. Managing a negative team member can be difficult. Managing a negative team is disastrous. Not all negativity is bad. If some employees, by their nature, are glass half empty people and they look for what can go wrong in nearly every situation. These traits can be really useful if harnessed in the right way. Other negative employees undermine their colleagues, spread negative rumours behind backs, pass blame onto others for their mistakes and are constantly moaning about something. Dealing with negative team members who behave in this way is a must. I'm taking you through these six steps for dealing with negative employees quickly and fairly. Managing negative employees in the workplace doesn't have to be difficult or have a bad outcome. Take these steps and be confident in getting to a sensible outcome for all concerned. My name is Jess Coles and I've had a 25 year management career in corporates and household names through to SMEs. I learnt quickly that dealing with negative employees fairly and quickly is a must to maintain good team motivation and happiness. Address the causes of negativity quickly. And if you're new to this channel, Enhanced.Training shares business and people management expertise to help you improve your performance and that of your team and business. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. The first step when dealing with negative employees is don't ignore the problem. Your chances are the problem of negative employees will only grow if you don't take action. There are loads of reasons an employee might be negative. For instance, if a normally happy employee is becoming negative, they may, for instance, have a problem in their personal life. Or it could be they have a problem with an action or decision taken by you or others within the business. Or it might be having problems with colleagues on a personal level, or it could be struggling with workload or a specific project and they've become negative as a cry for help. There are loads of possible reasons. Or the team member might be a naturally negative person, always looking out for the problems in a situation and focus on the risks that might occur. This mindset can be very useful if engaged in a constructive way and they manage their negativity appropriately. Or the employees might be a destructive negative employee, continually putting others down, making excuses for poor work and generally being problematic. Whatever type of negative employee you have, don't ignore the problem. If you do, firstly the negativity may spread throughout the team. Secondly, you are in effect giving the negative employee permission to continue their behaviour through lack of action. Third, the negative behaviour may well get worse. Fourth, other team members may become demotivated or even leave the team and company because of the negative behaviour. Fifth, you might lose sales as negative employees make for unhappy customers. And sixth, if team motivation drops, then team performance will soon follow. None of this is good for you, nor the team, nor the business. As the manager, it is your job to manage negative team members so the team overall and individual team members are not impacted in a negative way. You as manager must take action to achieve this. The second step when dealing with negative employees is to gather examples and evidence. Gathering examples is a really important step. Evidence and fact trump opinion in most discussions. Using examples of what was said and what happened takes the emotional heat out of the discussion and are much harder to argue against. Examples help move the conversation away from one person's opinion against the other person's opinion. Gather your examples and for each one think through how you're going to explain the impact of what they said or did. You know, talk about feelings, motivation, damaging relationships, weakening the team and over time reducing team performance. All of these things leave everyone involved worse off. If there is no impact then there is no need to change so make the impact clear. Make sure you have clear examples and you can explain the impact on individuals, the team and the business before speaking to the negative employee. The third step when dealing with negative employees is to find out why. There are so many reasons why there are negative employees in the workplace. There may be a specific reason as a result of an action, decision or lack of action taken. Or the team member may be inherently negative as part of their personality. Find out the nitty gritty of what is going on before deciding what action to take. 
book a private one-on-one -on -one meeting with the individual and outline your concerns. Take them through the examples you have put together and the impact you think their negativity is having. Be sympathetic and considerate of their feelings without watering down your message. Ask them what they are thinking and feeling. Ask them what has caused them to feel and be negative. Then stop talking and listen to what they say. Employ all of your active listening skills. Take note of their tone of voice, their body language and all the other non-verbal clues they will be giving off while they speak. If the team member is being negative because of an action taken or a decision made by you or elsewhere in the company, then you will have to take some corrective action to reduce or remove the negativity. Actively listening to their concerns, being sympathetic and explaining the decision or the action in more detail and giving them a chance to vent their annoyance, frustration, disappointment, etc. can work wonders in itself. When something is unfair, then do your best to rectify it. Your actions, whether successful or not, are often enough to remove the negativity. If the reason for the employee being negative does not originate from you or from the company, then move on to the next step. The fourth step when dealing with negative employees is to set out your expectations. As manager or leader of a team, you set the rules. What you say, and most importantly what you do, will tell the team what you expect from them. When dealing with negative employees, explain to them the behaviour and actions you expect from them. Your expectations will be specific to your situation. Be clear about what you want and communicate this clearly. I nearly always follow up with an email setting out my expectations in these situations. This provides reference point for both parties and reduces confusion or misunderstandings. This reference point is useful later if their negative behaviour doesn't change. Here are some of the expectations that I've set out in different situations to give you some ideas. Firstly, bring one solution with each problem. Secondly, don't say anything behind a person's back that you wouldn't say to their face. Third, don't moan generally. Make it specific and constructive. We might be able to take action this way. Fourth, be as realistic as possible. Don't under or over promise or big up or downplay situations. Fifth, you will not be aggressive or try and intimidate your work colleagues. If this continues, I will have to take formal action. Sixth, for every point you bring up that is not going well, can you bring up a point that is going well? Seventh, I am very sympathetic to your personal situation. At the same time, I have the whole team to look after. I am very happy to give you paid leave for you to seek counselling and support from experts who can really help you. What do you say? There are some examples that I've used in the past. I mean, generally speaking, the more consistent you are with both what you say and what you do, the clearer the expectations you set with the team and the less trouble you'll have from the team members falling below those expectations. Communicate your expectations clearly and consistently. The fifth step when dealing with negative employees is to give them a chance to change. In my experience, it is well worth giving second chances for most situations. Nine times out of ten, the team member will respond positively and you and the team will be better off. So after you've understood this issue and thought about what your expectations are and why and you've told the employee and followed up in writing, give them a chance to change. Put in the effort to help them change. Book in one-on-one -on -one meetings to mentor and coach them. This approach shows that you care and are willing to help. This makes a big difference in itself. For glass half empty people, you might coach them to, over a few months say, to be more balanced in how they feed back in team meetings for instance. At the other end of the scale, for unacceptable behaviour for instance, you might expect the change to be immediate. Match the time frame and how you support them to the situation. Give them a realistic chance to change. The sixth step when dealing with negative employees is to take formal action. By discussing the negative behaviour and setting your expectations, you are asking the negative employee to change. For most employees, this is more than enough. Some employees will choose not to change for whatever reason or not to take action to help themselves. At this point, weigh up the pros and cons of having this employee on your team and weigh up the impact of not taking further action on the rest of the team and your credibility as a manager. Assuming you choose to take further action, then I would recommend starting with a performance improvement plan. This is a more formal process setting out your expectations and what you are asking from the negative employee. You may want to consult with your HR team at this point. 
document the actions that you are expecting for them to take and what success looks like. Decide on the timeframes. You know, I would recommend a maximum of three months. Share this document with the negative employee and get their input and agreement with the goals. Coach and support them to improve and meet your expectations. This removes any excuses they might have about not getting enough support to improve. Regularly review their progress. If their negative behaviour does not improve to meet expectations set out, then move the process into a disciplinary process, which may lead to the employee leaving. Follow your company's policies and your legal requirements and work with your HR team through the process. Good luck. Managing a negative staff member can be frustrating and draining and is likely to be damaging to team morale. Take action to deal with the negative employees so their negative impact on the team is minimised or removed. If you don't take action in managing negative team members, by your lack of actions you are communicating their behaviour is okay. This will not help anyone. Take action quickly. And just as a reminder, the steps that we've gone through are firstly, don't ignore the problem, second, gather examples and evidence, third, find out why, fourth, set out your expectations, fifth, give them a chance to change, and then sixth, take formal action if needed. And if you have any questions on how to deal with a negative employee, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.